This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Morning and welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Friday, Friday, January 19th. Until after 11 o'clock in the morning, once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host for today. I do apologize for the late start. I was trying to make sure my guest is situated. She is situated. I am elated to have her on. My guest today is Dr. Yambi Hall Campbell Dean. She's joining me via Zoom. I thought she was going to be in studio, so I was downstairs, you know, procrastinating and hey. I'm not on Zoom. I said, oh, okay, let me run back upstairs. So I'm back upstairs. Doctor, Dr. Dean, you there? Good, uh, good morning, CA. I apologize for the mix-up, but I'm so glad to be joining you this morning. I blame it on the colonizers. The colonizers <laughs> caused you to be late. And the reason why I'm using that term, because that's what one of the things that we're talking about today, colonization and, in fact, decolonization. The other week, but last week, two weeks ago, I had a conversation about colonization or decolonization and the need for it, whether there's a need for it or whether Dr. Campbell Dean and the likes of her are pontificating just to hear themselves. Right. Um, for if you don't know, my listening audience, Dr. Dean is the chairman of reparations. And give me the, the right term for that again. What's your chair again, Dr. Dean? It's the Bahamas National Reparations Committee, which is one of which is the local organization of the larger CARICOM Reparations Commission. Yes. And this local chapter, along with the international chapter, is seeking reparation. And there are, there are a number of persons who say, which, you know, people seeking a reparation for, right? Mm -hmm. That's long time. Slavery, colonization is over, right? You're equal now, right? right. The, we live in a capitalist co uh, co concept where every man can, and woman can make a living and be rich. We have black rich people. We have white rich people. We have Jews and Gentile rich people. Everyone is equal. However... Right. Uh, Dr. Dean, Campbell Dean, is saying that we need to make an af active steps to remove certain aspects of colonization. That is holding us down. I think that's my summary of it. And I allow you to speak now to explain what decolonization means, why is it important, and then you can throw in the reparation and why you all keep on asking these foreign white people for compensation. Right. So again, thank you so much for having me and um, being so patient with the mix-up that we had this morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and talk um, about these issues that I think still affect us in so many ways, um, ways that we are conscious and even um, affect us it, it subconsciously in our community. Uh, before I think you understand what decolonization is, it, it is useful to understand what we mean when we say <laughs> colonization. And um, <laughs> oh, the, I think I like to keep things as simple as possible, right? And so colonization really is just the process of going to another's land and space and saying, this ain't yours no more, I want it, it it's mine, right? Um, in school, we used to call that Debo, right? I come and I just take what's yours, and I take it over. And I think that it's important for us to note that colonization was a process that happened um, in the Bahamas and regionally around the world, not only in terms of the physical land and the space, but that there was a project to create um, many versions of the colonizer in their colonized space, right? So they were not only colonizing your land, uh, which we still see today as crown land, right? Um, but your, your culture, your understanding of um, what is right and wrong, your perception of who God is, 
um, in religion, your education, the information that you learn in schools. Um, my parents, for example, um, can clearly tell you about knowing that coal came from which part of England. And, and um, my dad talks about go when he went off to school in England, knowing more about the UK than, <laughs> than the British students that he was in class with, right? Um, so your education system, your religion system, your your values, your perception of what what is good and what is what is wrong, um, what's the right way to do things and what is the wrong way to do things. So decolonization then is the process of uprooting all of that information um, and not just um, explicating it, right? Not just exercising it from your mind, from 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 your from your laws, um, from your land but exercising it from your understanding of who you are as a people. And um, we could look at the work of people like Franz Fanon and Marcus Darby and Walter Rodney as they really, um, or even Amy, Amy, Amy Garvey Cooper to name some, some women warriors there as well, right? Um, as they, they did this work of trying to help us to understand what the process and what the work of decolonization is. The other day, you were up in arms, and up in arms is my word, because you just make <laughs> a point, right? You know, I speak, I speak colorful words, so understand me, forgive me. The other day, you were vexed or ratted over the name um, British Colonial Hotel. You suggested, man, we need to change that name. Why keep that colonial name? And you're saying that we should have had a conversation since the place was closed down, why weren't the public, the general Bahamas, Bahamians, uh, considered, consulted to say, well, perhaps we should change this name? Yeah, so as vexterated is your, your colorful term <laughs> in regards to my experience to it, um, I think what I really was trying to, um, to express is to, as a society, question why this granted private organization, right? So they have the right to name themselves whatever they deem um, fit. But why did this private, um, to my understanding, Chinese organization see it fit to, in coming off of our 50th year anniversary of independence, hold on to this name, hold on to the moniker of not only colonial, but British colonial um, for the name of this hotel that is so prominently situated um, in, in the middle uh, of downtown Nassau. You know, I, I just thought that that was a very um, particular and, and curious choice, right? Um, if we think of what colonization is, um, and the violence that is part and parcel of colonization. You, you, colonization is in, it, in of itself a violent um, entity, right? So you cannot just say that you are um, incorporating the name of colonization and you're only using... Um, the part that involves tea and crumpets, or you're only incorporating the part that involves, um, you know, kings and queens and, and princesses with pretty dresses. No, colonization is a violent endeavor. So why did this, this company feel like they wanted to herald, uphold, and keep that type of violence <sighs> against our people in particular, um, in, in, in the moniker of their, of their organization. What if I tell you, Dr. Campbell, Dean, that we wanted the name to stay? We beg the Chinese investors mm -hmm. that keep the name British Colonial because that's the best of us. That this mm -hmm. represents a past that we reach to, to, to strive for. This is why we, king, we keep the, knighted, the knighthood. This is why we keep the king's council because we love it. We want to be British, right? We strive to be 
whitish. But you and your black self, sorry, I mean, not saying black self, but you dark, but you know, you and your African self, right? Colorful words. Yeah. Are trying to make us more black than what we are, right? It's just you and your minority grouping that you are trying to make us less ravitar. Mm. And I would say that um, I can't make us more or less of anything than than we actually are, right? I I I and even the movement cannot make us more or less of what you actually are. We we don't have the power to create who you are. I think the only thing that we endeavor to do is to highlight the reality of who we are. Um, I remember reading Islanders in the Stream. Um, and unfortunately, this was not a text that I um, became familiar with until after I had left the Bahamas and came back. But one of the things that um, the late Dr. Gail Saunders and, and Michael Crichton state in the book when examining uh, the history of education and education development in the Bahamas, the, the quote says that it was clear that education in the Bahamas was not created to allow us to know the full reality of ourselves. In other words, the purpose of education was not for you to know who you were as a Bahamian or for you to even understand what that term meant. The purpose was to create little British citizens outside of Britain, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so when we say that we like this, we like these things, we love these things, or I'm trying to make you more um, of something that you're not, who are we? Right? First, we have to discover who we really are. And we can, there's no way for us to deny that we have a European heritage in this country. We have an American heritage in this country, but we also have a strong African heritage in this country, right? And we can see that in the way we dance, the way we eat, the way we talk. It's just there. So my goal is not to remove or erase or make more of, but simply to highlight, educate, and um, illuminate who the essence of who we really are. Morning, morning, doctor. <clears throat> How are you, Erin Green here? Hi, Erin. How are you doing? Great. In that instance, I would have flipped the, s the switch if somebody suggested that the uh, reparations committee or any particular individual or group uh, in the critique of the re retention of the name for the hotel is forcing upon us a blackness that doesn't exist, right? Forcing mm -hmm. upon us an Africanness that makes us lesser than. I would, I would say, let's look at the alternative which is, the, it's not the people concerned about the retention of the name, it's those that demand that we retain the name, that mm -hmm. attempt to make us more white than we are, more mm -hmm. European than we are, right? That mm -hmm. the problem isn't the person who asks why the name, now that we are no longer colonial subjects, it's the person who demands or insists that we cannot be whole or we cannot be valuable to the rest of the world unless we maintain that identity as good colonial subjects. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and again, right, why would that person feel like that? Where, where would that understanding of who they are and what our value is, where does that come from? And the fact that we have people in our community that, that still feel that way, I think just points to the fact that, that there's a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, like, have we forgotten what tourism actually is if we say, listen, we need to keep this name to be attractive to tourists. Tourists come to consume, envelop themselves in, be a part of whatever the existing culture is in a country. Absolutely. Right. And so why is it that the people who produce our tourism product think that an identity of good colonial subjects is attractive to tourists or is of value to the tourist product? Surely who we are is the tourist product in and of itself. Right. So, and I think that there's also a very, um, <laughs> there's a way that you use 
or that the, the history and the reality of who you are is used within tourism, right? Um, in Germany, for example, they people go to the, the, the sites of the Jewish Holocaust, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's a tourist product, um, but it is not, but it is something that is a part of their culture that they remember within their culture as this is something that happened that we have to make sure that we don't do again. Mm -hmm. Right. And even though it's a part of their culture, you do not see um, hotels that say um, Hitler's Germany hotel. Mm -hmm. Right. They don't call upon the worst parts of themselves to bring people in, even though those, um, horrible parts of their culture brings people in. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Campbell Dean, um, you mentioned who we are and what we are, right? And, and, and then Aaron expanded on it saying that tourists come here to experience us. I'll put it toward, to, to you that we, don't, we do not own tourism. Tourism is a foreign product that they sell. So they sell a foreign product. And that Bahamians not saying that they're not interested in being a part of tourism. They just don't know how to get in to be a part of it, right? And this is why when we sell ourselves or expose ourselves, uh, uh, it's not, it, there's nothing authentic. What is an authentic bohemian to you? Or, or is there such a thing as an authentic bohemian? Aren't we European, American, African, Caribbean, so hodgepodge confused type things yeah but i mean we are but i also think that that's what it means to be an authentic bahamian right i think being authentic bahamian is recognizing the hodgepodgeness of your identity um and i think that it's really interesting as well that when we look throughout the caribbean that I think this conversation um, about who we are as a people is one that we in the Bahamas consistently have. And I think that it contributes to some of the xenophobia that we experience as well, is that we're, we, we kind of always sit in kind of unclear, like, are we, are we this? Are we that? Who are we really? Um, for example, just kind to kind of highlight that, um, I've been a lecturer at the Bahamas, or at the University of the Bahamas, sorry, for the past over 10 years now. So from COB, right? And one of the projects that I've done in my class for 10 years in one of my classes is to ask the students, what language do Bahamians speak? I have never in 10 years had a class where there was a consistent response as to what language we speak as Bahamians. When I asked, um, and this is a project, right? So they go out and they survey people and they ask them this very simple question, <laughs> what language do Bahamians speak, right? And there has never been a class that had one consistent response. So let me ask you, what language do we speak? I would say that Bahamians speak Bahamian, right? Uh, and not put any qualifier on it in terms of um, Bahamian Creole English. We're Bahamian, so we speak Bahamian. And I, I'm not a linguist, <laughs> so I know that there are some um, there's some controversy about whether you would add the Creole um, in that or just leave it as Bahamian. Um, and say that, you know, it's not a version of anybody else's language, but it is simply our language. But the fact that there is so, uh, that there are so many inconsistencies around something as basic as language speaks to the fact that we're still in a place where we're trying to, to get a, a clear understanding. The phones are lit up, doctor. So I'm going to allow one or two people to engage you. Hopefully get it short. Because there are some white Bahamians, conky Joe Bahamians, who say, man, with this black talk, y'all trying to squeeze, y'all trying to exclude us, right? But see, I, did I say anything about blackness? I try to say, but decolonization means that their history is going to be put on the side. They have a Anglo, they have a European history, and they want 
to keep it there. And you were trying, not saying you, just being pushing, right? Trying to say we are more African. And they have an issue. But I want you to answer that, by the way, because I'm baiting you now to join the conversation. But I want to go to the callers because I see they've been calling for a while. I didn't include them. So callers, you call now. You have to be sure because I just baited Dr. Dean and she needs to respond. Uh, go ahead, first caller. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? No, go on. Hang up from that. Hang up from that. Sorry. Okay, callers, no, no, no. So go ahead, uh, Dr. Dean. First of all, Dr. Dean, don't be a grouper. This is all... <laughs> Plantation Chikchani here. Okay, don't be a group. I got a beta, so we can get it. <laughs> now, come, let's go to the next caller there. Go ahead, go ahead, Prusa. Go ahead, caller. Hey, how you doing? Doing well. Hey, Doc, how you doing? Good morning, I'm well. Yes, yeah, glad to hear you. But, Doc, I really think the um, what you pointed to is very pregnant in regards to saying that when you say bohemian, that you didn't say black, and I think that's interesting. But to your point, sadly, what I what I would like to say is is that the information that you're given, because it's so fresh and new in the minds, which I think in most behemoths, which I think is a part of colonization, we, most people who hear in it will not be able to contextualize it. And I believe one of the other components of colonization is what the question we should ask is what in the Bahamas about our culture that we would say you can't do establish anything in here if you don't include this or if you are going to exclude this part of our culture, you cannot do business here. And if we could answer it, if we can't find something, then I would suggest that a part of colonialism too is that everything about who makes us what we are is at a price. Thank you very much, Carla. You want to respond to that, Dr. Dean? Every, I, he said everything that makes us who we are is what? Oh, he, hang up. I'm sorry. Um, he was basically saying that uh, we need to include, like if, if a foreign investor yeah. comes to invest, they need to include bohemianism in their concept or be rejected. Yeah, I... I I loved I love I, I love that perspective and I think that again that just speaks to us asserting ourselves you know uh, and 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 being proud and not just proud right because I think that Bahamians generally have a a, a strong love um for for a country so it's it's something that is not necessarily just a pride, and I, I probably need to investigate about what what the specific word is. But it's an understanding, and it's a knowing of who we are, and feeling like we we're worthy of it. You know. Okay, we have another caller who wants to uh, uh, to address you. Producer Pastor, caller through. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Good morning, Mister Dory. How you doing? Doing well, Sparky. You know, Mister Dory, I wonder why after all these years. We seem to be talking about our slavery more than, than we seem to be talking about how proud we are to be black. We, we keep talking about slavery and the pirates and uh, my sister's restitution to here and, and the Sheraton British Colonial Hotel. Like we begging them up to show a tourism attraction for the tourists. So like we still on the plantations we still the little nigger boys picking cotton, while only a few of us, they say, are the elites, living the big, lavish life of the investors. And we still, Woods Rogers statue out in the front of the colonial house, like Columbus statue and Queen Victoria statue. They still landmarks. And, you know, so Woods Rogers was a pirate himself. Mm -hmm. But he was a governor. And he took down Black Bear, and Black Bear and, the, and the, the families in, in Bimini used to supply the British water and different things when they came from England to go down to the Caribbean because they were no longer after the war of independence. They were not, a, where they were not welcome in America. So they had to come around. The Bahamas was the, was the closest route. They would stop in Bimini where they picked up the supplies and so forth to go down to South Mexico, 
South America okay, to get the gold and so forth to come back, only to be ravaged by other pirates to steal the gold and silver and everything from them to give. Okay, let's go to the next caller there. Go ahead, caller. We talk to Dr. Naomi Campbell Dean. Call going once. Is that me? Yes, that's you. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, Doc. Good morning. You need justice law and order in this country here in the Bahamas. But let me ask you something. What is Bahamian? Hello? Dr. Campbell, Dean? Yes. What is Bahamian? Sure is. You use the word Bahamian. You said yes. Bah- uh, bah- uh, the people are Bahamian. What yes. is Bahamian? Um, and I think that that's a good question. For me, being Bahamian means being uh, an amalgamation of cultures that include uh, European culture, American culture, but also strongly African culture. Um, and the way that we in this particular land mixed all of those cultures together and came up with things like um, Junkanoo and South and peas and rice and um, Bongi and Tingham in the bush and, <laughs> you know, Saracy tea and um, Lignum vitae. So I think, you know, when, when you ask the, the question of what is Bahamian, you, you're speaking to a plethora of different things, um, but that, that, that plethora, that pot mixed together comes up with something really, really good. The Ministry of Education is in the process of rewriting some of the history books, some of the curriculum to make it more bohemian, right? To make yeah. it look and reflective of who we are. Some people are saying that's blackwashing instead of whitewashing. You're trying everything to make it a black narrative. With this decolonization word that you, that you, that you use that is happening in, throughout the diaspora, right? Is it blackwashing? No, it's not blackwashing, but I could see how someone might perceive it as such. Um, again, when we, when you know, referencing that quote by um, from Islanders in the Stream, the original education that we had in this country did not permit us to know our reality. So, if what we are accustomed to, which we have been um, taught, was accurate, or taught was sufficient, or taught was right. When we learn that that wasn't actually the case, that, oh, there were other people that made contributions or this story was also as important as these other stories, um, then, you know, you may feel like you're losing. But when the truth comes out, when all people's history are, are revealed and valued in the same way, there is nothing to be lost, only um, enlightenment need. Okay, we have another caller who wants to engage you, producer. Patch that caller through for me, please. Go ahead, call. Can you hear me? Uh, doctor, if I look in the dictionary, what I find that that description in which you describe Bahamian, that's what I want. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you would find in the dictionary, but I think that... Um, well, then, if, you, if you're not sure, that... Description in which you give, that, that wouldn't satisfy me or anybody. So you want, a, you want, Raymond, the, you want a national uh, encyclopedia or the dictionary? You want a national description then? Okay. Right. One by the government. Or any national description. Okay, I hear you. So, but, Bremen is calling for the government to give an official definition, delining of what it is to be bohemian. No, no, what is Bahamian? What is Bahamian? Or what is a Bahamian? So while we were talking, but, I went... But, but the Constitution gives what is Bahamian, eh? No, it doesn't define what a Bahamian is? No, it doesn't. The Constitution don't say... But a Bahamian is, some, is a, is a con- construct. It's a legal construct. Mm. Not a cultural construct. Cultural construct comes from social scientists, which means it changes. But there's a legal construct, which is defined within the Constitution. But who's... Why, why are you speaking as if the legal construct automatically is prioritized over a social construct? He wants a definition, international I you definition. a definition I find from the Google. Google is international. Google sub, uh, uh, supersedes, <laughs> supersedes the, the Constitution. No, I just say, and he asked for an international definition, right? He wants something bigger 
then the Bahamas to define the Bahamas, which Bahamian in and of itself is a problem. Like, I mean, only Bahamians could define Bahamian. But Go ahead. The, the dictionary on Google told me when I asked, when I click Bahamian definition, it uh -huh. says Bahamian adjective relating to or characteristic of the Bahamas or their people. Example, a television program that showcases Bahamian history. Bahamian noun, a native or inhabitant of the Bahamas. Example, water sports are popular with Bahamians and tourists. Mm -hmm. I have a text here. It says, uh, please ask your guests, what is, what is the committee doing in the way of educating in way of education to reform the current education systems curriculum, is the committee pushing for African education in schools taught from our perspective? Also, I feel calling ourselves Bohemian itself is colonization. Uh, who gave us that name? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we do have um, an ambassador for reparatory justice, the Honorable um, Philip Smith. And he is actually leading a charge with the Ministry of Education as we speak um, in regards to the committee and us working with um, the new curriculums that are being in place and just going to schools and talking about uh, who we are as a people, right? Our real history um, and, and the work of the reparations movement. So that is definitely work that is being um, embarked upon. And the, the Bahamas was, uh, to my understanding, came from um, our first uh, colonizers, um, Spanish for Baja Mar, right? Shallow waters. And so the, I know that there were a number of um, indigenous names that the, the, the Taino people um, placed on this land. And one of one them was Bahama. That's an, that's an indigenous name also. Bahama is an Arawak mean, means like for Grand Bahama, which, depending okay. on who you ask, uh, a historian you ask, will, will, will explain why the Bahamas is named the Bahamas, because of the Arawak name Bahama. And hint to that is Grand Bahama, which is, again, is part of the Arawak list of islands' names that we still maintain. I just want to throw that in. So that's separate from Baja Separate, Mar. Completely separate, but coincidence okay. that both had, had at the same time. Nice. I know Guanahani, but I think that was specific to um, San Salvador. Yeah. Bimini is also an Awak name and Samanaki. It goes on, Inagua. But anyway, right. I have another a caller online. Um, producer passed the caller through to address the Dr. Dean. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good, good morning, CA. Good morning, um, Aaron. Good morning, Dr. Um, Hall Campbell. Morning, morning. Uh, good my morning. My question is, uh, Dr. What would reparations look like in your opinion? Are you seeking $20 million? Are you seeking $100 million? What are you looking for the, uh, um, the colonial masters to do for so-called the people of the Bahamas? Would this money go in? If they were to give us, let's say if they give us $50 million, would that go in our sovereign wealth fund? Would that go to Bahamians? And, and how would you be able to determine who is a Bahamian? Is it by what? How black they are? Um, their DNA? What, what, what percentage of blackness they have in it? Because, uh, you know, my thing is, doctor, we should try petition the government if the people, the land that was given to us by the crown. We should, we should be, this government can empower us now. We don't have to wait for England or, or any other body any, um, to empower us with reparation. The government have millions of acres of land, crown land, so I'm there. And you know who benefiting from it? Their cronies and this one that. Why don't the, the government give every so-called Bahamian? I'm not asking for 40 acres and a mule. One acre, at least one acre of land. And so he can, he can empower us. Okay, go ahead. Let, let, let Dr. Campbell do it. Don't, don't forget the goat. This is important. <laughs> One acre and a goat. Milk. Declare the whole land. Leather. Declare everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without a doubt. Go ahead, doctor. Absolutely. Um, so, the Bahamas, again, is a member of the CARICOM Reparations Commission. And the CRC um, 
uses a developmental reparations model. And so if you if you were to go online or just Google um, CRC 10 point plan, you will see that there are 10 points of development in which we are embarking reparations upon. They include things like um, a, the public health crisis, uh, education, debt cancellation is the 10th point in the plan. So there are a number of ways that um, uh, reparations would would come, but it, it we don't employ um, a, a check to an individual model. That would be something that you would see more akin to in the United States. Um, that said, fully agree that um, reparations is a, a movement that happens externally, but also internally. And so part of the internal work is the education that we are doing within the schools, but it is also um, us having conversations about things like Crown Land. And so uh, as we endeavor to get our program started for 2024, um, that is one of the things we would like to tackle through a forum. Um, there was also the release of the Brattle Report. I don't know how many people are familiar with this, but this was a report done um, by the International Court um, Justice Patrick Robinson in conjunction with an economics group called the Brattle Group. And they came up with an actual um, number, right, of a figure of the amount of, of funds that are owed in reparations to the different regions uh, or the different islands, sorry, within the, the Caribbean region. And um, Prime Minister Min, uh, Mia Motley, who is the chair of the Prime Minister's Secretarial Board for Reparations, has uh, reported or talked about this report as well. So there, there is a lot of work to be done in terms of, um, you know, how reparations would look specifically, where the money would go. But these are conversations that we are open to have, right? And we, we're not going to necessarily wait for the model to be complete before we start working on, on what it is that we need to, to build the model. I have some more callers that want to engage you. Producer, pass the caller through. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? You're talking yeah, good, morning. Go good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Erin. Good morning, uh, Dr. Campbell. Mm -hmm. Campbell Dean. Campbell Dean. Okay, thank you so much. Listen, the previous caller, I echo the sentiments and the concerns of the previous caller. In fact, that is part of the reason why I was going to call, but he beat me to the punch. You know, uh, a lot of we as Bahamians, we know that reparations can come in just about any form, not just financial. Who is the commission that's going to be the holder of these assets other than the Bahamas government? And when I say Bahamas government, I'm not talking about the government per se, the i.e. the Bahamian people. I'm talking about these political party governments that we have in our parliament. This is the major concern that many Bahamians have because a lot of these, the, the systems that we operate under, a lot of Bahamians do not trust them because a lot of persons in high places know how to man manipulate these. Who is going to be the real watchdogs? on ensuring that the reparations, whatever it is that we as Bahamians will receive from the act that we are after, who is going to be the, 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 the holder, the overseer, and where are these funds going to be deposited that is going to benefit the Bahamian people? That is, that is primarily, in my closing remark, that is the primary concern of every right, logical, thinking Bahamian, as we have seen the, the abuses from time immemorial in this country where the Bahamian people do not truly totally benefit from anything tangible that comes into this country to where it comes into directly into their hands for them to take care of themselves and their families for generations to come. Thank but you very much. My call this morning. Definitely. Let's go to the next caller there, producers. Let's get it all as possible. Go ahead, caller. You're on. Turn on your radio. Hey, good morning, Mr. Neary. Good morning. Go ahead. And good morning, Mr. Ian. Good morning. Um, I, I have a question. Why shouldn't we fight for um, to get away from the British system? Because if we try the name of the buildings and, and, and certain things that they do here, would it change anything? Because it, it, doesn't we still under that? 
Under, 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 under. She's challenging whether we are truly independent and whether the British system still control us. Oh, <laughs> um, I so so we are an an independent country. Um, but as we were talking about what it means to be uh, Bahamian, you know, there are still many vestiges of of our our European heritage, our our English heritage that. Um, that we use, that we incorporate, especially when we look at um, the legal system. So, I, um, you know, th there's still evidence there, but we we are our own people. Okay, let's go to the next caller, producer. Let's patch to call it through. Go ahead, producer. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Yeah, we are our own people, but we got our constitution, which our other country got the same, got, got the same constitution, what we have, the same constitution. So you got to fix that, please. I hear you, Bremen. Even though we have tweaked our constitution over the years, that's why we have referendums and our constitution has other countries. But I appreciate your point. Let's go to the next caller. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Hey, no, what is that? Doing well, man. Blessing to you. Listen, I hear our dog. Somebody asked Doc, uh, say, what is Bohemian? Mm -hmm. That's what they asked, right? That's what they asked. Well, uh, I want to have Doc. Doc was really trying to show them, but when she gone to the American and the different things, uh, it really threw me a little off a little bit, but it gave me a little clear understanding. Mm -hmm. well, when you go to America, you say Americans, right? Mm -hmm. They are Americans, right? Mm -hmm. When you go to Haiti, they say Haitian, right? Mm -hmm. Then you go to uh, Jamaica, they say Jamaicans, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you something, Nuri. Why did they say Americans and Haitians and Jamaicans? Because of the way they speak, right? Uh, because of their constitution and defining who they are. But right. Ahead. The way they speak, too, right? Okay. That play a role. Let me tell you why that play a role. Okay. So you could go to any one of them countries in any other country in the world and say, what are you dealing with? Hey, what you saying? My man, too. See, Dread, I on that run, you know. You could go any place in the world and find people talking like that. That's only it. yes, only a couple though, and it's really weird. And it, it doesn't it doesn't disprove your point though, right? It doesn't disprove your point because those pockets are uh, when you examine those pockets, then you realize we have a deeper connection to those communities. Okay. So when you hit areas where Gullah Gullah and Geechee speaking people are. Then you had those similarities, and there's a. No, but I was speak. I was speaking more mainly about the Caribbean, America, and uh, African place like them. Just that's exactly what I'm talking about, cousin. We on the same page. We on the same page. There are these small pockets where you will find people that sound just like us, and there's a a, a more ancient. Let's call it a more ancient or a far so, older connection of culture. So, Aaron, yeah. you're telling me that I could go someplace else on this on this planet other than. The yes. Bahamas. Yes. Find someone saying, hey, yes. were you dealing with Yeah, where you find Gullah Gullah And then I, I, I want to tell you the story of a place in Africa. I'm not going to tell it now. When we meet in person, oh, I'm right. going to tell you the story. I hear talk yours one other times, right? Uh huh. You can find them saying Bongido? Yes. yes, that's an African word. Yeah. That's yeah. an African word. Africa? Yeah, it's yeah. an African word. Okay. Yeah. I, can, I can believe it in that area there. Yeah. And that's what but, I'm saying. The connections the are older. But, the other part, you could find that in America? Uh, in the Gullah Geechee uh, community. America. Hold on, I say if you could find it in America. Yeah, in the Gullah Geechee communities in the, the Carolinas, in the South. In Georgia. In Aaron. Georgia, yes. Aaron. Yes. I've been around plenty of Americans, plenty of people. I was a tall guy, right? And the way I used to speak, when they used to ask me to explain to them what I said. I know what you, I know what you mean, but trust yeah. me, they there. Okay, so they there, but... But that's what makes us be Bahamian. Absolutely, that, and 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 then we then we realize that what what makes us Bahamian is also what makes us African. Right, African Bahamians. They gotta get African American. Yes, yes. African to make all of us come from one land. And we got some European descent people who actually have a lot of African genetics and culture, and we all speak the same. We, exactly. We gotta I go to the break. That. We gotta go to break. Thank you so much, caller. Okay, bef before I go, uh, Dr. Dean, when you come back, get, uh, they said, what I do understand is a text. What I do not understand is how we are looking for reparations when we still swear to royal crown sporting white wigs religiously 
plus playing roots every election like we still in servitude. Um, I want you to respond to that when we come back on the other side of the bridge, break. Guy in Radio AM with C.A. Nuri. We have Dr. Nambi Hall, Campbell Dean on. Of course, Aaron Green is uh, with me today. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, Dazzy here. Listen, after 50 years of independence, to be a Bahamian in today's world also carries with it the responsibility of global citizenship. Tune in and sit with me. We'll discuss international news, finance, economics, pop culture, and trends that affect us as Bahamians not only locally, but also our contributions beyond the rock. Beyond the Rock with your host, Dazzy, begins January 16th, 6.30 to 7.30, right here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. And welcome back to Guiding Radio AM with C.A. Nuri. I'm going to read this text. Dr. Naomi Campbell Dean, are you still there? Making sure you're still there. I want you to respond to this. Um, what I do not understand is how we are looking for reparations when we still swear to the royal crown, sporting white wigs religiously, plus playing roots every election like we still in servitude. What would be your response to that? So, well, specifically, I just would want to say that um, I'm so encouraged by the callers who are calling in and asking about um, the specific methodologies of how reparations would work, because it speaks to, I think, um, a, a, a growth, a, a movement in 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 our understanding of reparations, that reparations is something that is actually real and will happen. Um, Aaron, I know you remember when we first started having these conversations and and callers were simply like why that girl begging for white people money mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. i think that we have advanced the conversation and that's something um to note um in response to to what the caller is saying i i think that that is something that is significant to that we you know we still are a member of the commonwealth we still do um have the governor general as the, the, the highest person in, in office in the country. And so these are things that we would want to question and examine, but I think that we can chew gum and walk at the same time, right? Um, investigate our relationship to the crown. And if we want to see, still be a member of the Commonwealth or become a Republic like um, Barbados and which form of Republic um, that would be. I and think that's that why I plan to invite you back. Let's talk about this Republic thing. How would this Republic yeah. look? But I got to go now. The time has gone. But I'm going to make a booking now with you. Make an appointment. I want to talk about a Republic. Can we be a Republic of the Bahamas uh, from a African perspective? And, and would you accept the British Neo-Colonial Hotel as the new name of uh. the hotel? <laughs> <laughs> this has been guided me in the AM. With C.A. Nuri, thank you, Dr. Niembe, Campbell Hall, the, all the names. Yes, have a wonderful day. <laughs> thank you so much, good doctor. 